Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm very honored to be here and welcome all the experts from all over the world. And, but still, uh, my talk is basics in echocardiography, so probably focused on beginner and some fellows and some novice like I myself. <laughs> so um, I have no conflict of disclosure. And first of all, I'm thinking about what is the basic and basics. So I'm looking for the Oxford Dictionary, and they say the basics is something are its simplest and most important elements, ideas, or principles in contrast to more complicated or detailed or luxury ones. So we need to focus on much more um, simple thing uh, this session. In um, 1966, or all the time, Dr. Friedberg says the potential advantage of ultrasound cardiography is to permit the study of the soft tissue without catheterization and the introduction of contrast media. With regard to cardiovascular diagnosis, the method is still in the stage of research. This uh, statement is in 1966, and 21st century we are here still. It's working, I think. And ultrasound frequencies, we all know, the uh, number of cycles per one second. So we call that health. And then our uh, usage of a probe ultrasound, diagnostic ultrasound range is from two to 15 megahertz. And then more than 15, 20, 30, still um, some high frequency ultrasound is using for the research field. But in the clinical field, we use two to 15. And look at this, like a uh, uh, probe uh, every day, um, all the, uh, we are using in the echo lab or, or anywhere ICU or emergency room. Um, we all know the smaller probe has a high frequency, and so for a baby, younger baby, it's working. And then higher, thicker probe, the right side one, the number is a little lower one, two, two, three, like that. Much more depth but much um, the resolution is poor. So probably the adult or two to five is better, but the baby younger kid, seven or 10 or 12 is better, as you all know. So how to scan? Mm, it's kind of uh, um, our hand moving. Like fanning, fanning means like this kind of left to right, left to right, or some kind of rounding, and then angling, angling, uh, using your angle, and then rotating, the probe is rotating, and then move to translate all the other um, location. And then the uh, beauty of echo is, if we want to look at whatever, wherever, we can use our probe with our hands, much more angle, much more location and translation, we, we can do it if we want to look for where, what is it inside like that, and then we can try to look for. So um, scan, and then what to look inside by echo. And then this is our heart, and then we have a line like this uh, illustration. We call that um, long axis. Our heart is located here in the long axis, and then short axis and then the coronal section open like that. So we look at all the things to make a 3D reconstruction in our brain. So this is the baby inside, and then we can find um, long axis here, long axis, and then where is short axis, and apical, and then ductal, and then suprastinal arch, and then the subcostal view. So we all look this and then make a 3D reconstruction in our brain. So let's uh, step by one by one. Long axis view, we need to look at the axis and then open the heart, and then we can find this structure. So we saw here mitral valve, left atrium and mitral valve and LV, and then septum and RV, and then here LV to aorta. And then this is, just uh, having learned from Dr. Lee, this is very well concurred on heart, normal. And then we can look at this, all the structure here with long axis. And then this movement gives us the information about well pumping heart or not. And here also, LV outflow tract and aortic root and ascending aorta. If here, something happens, we can notice in this view. And then here, 
a little inside sweep, and then we can notice the tracker's valve RARV in uh, movement here. And then this is this standard view and movement and color Doppler in it. And then this time the short axis view. Uh, open the long axis and then we can make a clockwise rotation. You can inside brain. And then notice the middle well, the popular muscle view. And then a little up where tilting, different views. And then down where apical view we can get. So like this. And then the center aortic valve. And then all around the structures. So the interesting thing is all the views, always the center is aorta if it is normal concordant structure. And then this is an uh, open four chamber view and then we can notice the one, two, three, four chambers are in it. And then if it's really, really well concordant uh, heart and then pulmonary vein, left atrium, left ventricle, and then uh, SVC, IVC, RA, RV, then this is a concordant heart. But if it has a different connection here, Valve is like below this here, and then some um, something is in it. We need to find it. And then this is the apical view four chamber and three, two, and then five chamber views. And this is a suprasternal view. We uh, are aware about arch and the other structure, and then make a angle and pulmonary artery and pulmonary veins in it. So this is very useful for baby kid um, subcostal. So we need to look at IVC, and then IVC should drain into right-sided atrium, and then IVC and aorta relationship, and then the sometimes four chamber view is very good at this view. So having said all the things we make a summary about, image acquisition like this, um, this is from Dr. Uh, Chung Yan Che's book, I quoted it, all the depth we can make and focus and then gain, and then find format, we need to get a better image. And like this kind of Doppler, we need to make a parallel beam on the blood flow, and then the Doppler velocity we can get, and then all the hemodynamic information, and then all the color, the blood jets direction towards or forward, we can get it. So I will go for the cases. Mm, always, even the same disease, we need to learn a lot. Uh, points from each patient, I think. So this is a VST kit. You can notice the long axis view. Uh, all the septum is here, and then here, something shunt, so left to right. And then we can make a clockwise and short axis view. Here, the trichus valve, and then near there, the the defect is there, and then the shunt is there. So this kind of VSD, we call it perimembranous. Perimembranous VSD is located just under the great vessel, but the uh, mitra and trachus valve above that. So very, very thin membrane, we call that perimembranous portion. And how about this, the subcostal view, baby kit. And then this is liver, and this is anterior. And all the time, postural, ventricle is left ventricle and LV, LV to aorta, and then here some defect, and then RV tissue and trachus valve tissue, we notice some tissues in there and defect, and then shunt is there. So probably this is a perimembranous, but some trachus valve leaflet is touch uh, the shunt or not, we need to find that. And this time, um, mal-aligned VSD is all the structure is balanced, but sometimes a little twisted. And then the septum looks like a little posterior, so aorta looks like a little anterior shifted. In that case, we call that anterior mal-aligned. And opposite, this is septum, and then aorta looks like a little posterior located. This we call posterior mal-alignment. Very much cautious about this case. We need to find aorta is small, or a coarctation is there, or some arch problem is there. And this VSD, um, the hemodynamic helix, we can measure the shunt flow velocity. And then the shunt flow velocity, we can get the 4V velocity a square. And then the pressure we can get, and that pressure is in between LV and RV. So estimation is possible for um, RV pressure. 
And then even without catheterization, we can get the shunt amount between the VSD. If we can get the aortic diameter and then the area about amount of flow, and then RVOT diameter and the amount of flow area, we can get the QPQS. So this is another um, VSD, and then as we all know about this, Asian people has a lot about this kind of VSD, a little more uh, anterior field near the aorta and pulmonary artery, so we call this subarterial type. And then that VSD doesn't affect a lot RV, but it can touch the aortic valve or some um, aortic valve cusp, so it makes about uh, aortic valve prolapse or some sometimes aortic regurgitation. That makes uh, our decision um, urgently to make a correction or not, even though the shunt is small. And then this is muscular VSD. We can notice all the um, septum and then in between apical septum or muscular middle septum and, and a little upper wear. So the device closure is um, working on this kind of type of VSD. Well, and this is a uh, amplazer VSD occlusion devices inside, and then we can notice with echo like this kind of shadow, very echogenic shadow, and then devices here, uh -huh. and then the no no shunt in between two ventricles, and then let's move on tetralogy follow. The tetralogy follows it. Um, the key pathophysiology is infant hypoplasia in the pulmonary artery. So pulmonary artery is small. So relatively, aorta is a little wider space located, and then aorta overrides, we notice that, and then small pulmonary artery makes a VSD to the outlet septum. So the long axis shows like this, a little anterior model line VSD. Mm -hmm. So all the time anterior model line VSD you can notice, please find the uh, pulmonary artery is okay, or some pulmonary artery is smaller than aorta like that. So tetralogy follow. And then if we repair tetralogy of follow patient, this is a 10-year-old tetralogy of patient, and she came yesterday in my clinic, so I, I quickly tried to record that in a um, four-chamber view. RV looks still okay, but you can notice the LV to aorta. It's a little uh, angle shape, and we need to follow her tricuspid valve and LV and pulmonary artery as time passes. Ongoing RV systolic pressure is okay, or a TR jet, and RV flow velocity, PS or PI recur like that. And then this is uh, another patient about. Um, pulmonary stenosis and pulmonary regurgitation uh, happens already. So this kind of cases, we need to look for the RV volume and size all the time. And then if the guideline fits, we need to reopen our uh, intervention for the pulmonary artery. And this is a homograph failure cases. You can notice the big RA and RV geometry changes a little bit. RV apical geometry is deviated to the apex more than LV apex, which means RV is bigger and bigger and bigger. And then pulmonary artery here are some limitation about the flow. So stenosis and regurgitation happen at the same time. And this is prosthetic valve stenosis cases. The prosthetic valve is here, but uh, flow limits a lot. And then PI, PS is inside here. And then this time, double outlet right ventricle. This is very interesting disease. Um, uh, before Dr. Lee said about the great vessels malposition is the cause. So the aorta towards a little anterior, anterior, anterior. So a little bit anterior, it's kind of a just normal physiology, but a little more anteriorly, great vessel located about side by side, and then a little more rotated, the great vessel seems like a transposed uh, similar physiology. So double outlet RV should have VSD inside all the time. And then loss of mitral aorta continuity because of aorta moves a little forward and tailward. And then TGA is just all the, all the switch in two vessels in the developmental period. So LV2, pulmonary artery, how can we know that? Pulmonary artery should have two branches. And then aorta does not. RV connects aorta and then does not branch here. And then interesting is normally they switch, but here parallel gray vessel we can notice. So all the time, this kind of long axis view, uh, we 
we saw, we have to think about the transposed grade RD. And then short axis view, aorta is located much more anteriorly rather than pulmonary artery. In coarct, this time a grape vessel, coarctation of aorta, notice the small portion in the aorta, and like this, this is a MRI view. An interrupted aortic arch like this just interrupted, and then here probably some collateral arteries are shown, and we can notice where, where is the real uh, descending aorta, and then how long the segment is interrupted, we need to find. And this is um, just e emergency room case, one month old Down syndrome baby came in a little failure to thrive and respiratory difficulty, and here inside chamber all are connected. So all the atrium and ventricles are connected. It's Kirk's cord is, uh, has a problem. We call that atrioventricular septal defect. And then this kid has a mama and, uh, one week old, and uh, VSD is here, but quite large aorta and quite uh, moderate to large VSD, so already LV is bigger and MR happens there. And this baby has a pulmonary stenosis, and then we can assess the pulmonary trunk with color flow jet. All the time color flow jet, we need to uh, make an IQUASIT limit with a normal flow velocity. And the more than normal flow velocity, all the time the high velocity informs us about stenosis or some problem. And then this is ASD. ASD, um, we have been very much interested to close ASD for uh, more than decades. And then here, uh, atrial septal defect makes the right side heart a little volume overload, and then the septal paradoxical motion. And then we can look at the large defect or moderate size defect all the time, volume overload or arrhythmia is in there. We have to have a question. And then all the rims are okay. If we want to close the ASD with device, especially in that case, all the time we need to look at all the surrounding tissues and then aneurysm is in there or multiple defect or how long the size of all the rims. And then pulmonary hypertension is in there, we need to look at. And then, actually this should be moving, but <laughs> sorry. And then second term ASD, and then this is unroofed coronary sinus ASD, and then sinus venous type ASD, they are all different. Uh, if sinus venous type ASD, we can look at the SVC drains into RA, and then the ambiguous um, uh, tissues here. So we don't, we are not sure to look at the septum here. In this kind of case, it's difficult for um, device closure. And anomalous pulmonary venous return is the problem too. It's uh, combined very often. Especially here, you can look at the pulmonary vein. The right side pulmonary vein is touched in right side atrium. Here, right side atrium together. So three of them drains into LA, but one uh, drains into LA. In this case, we need to look at the saturation is okay or if we um, let it go or, or what to do, we need to decide. So all the time, the ASD septum and then surrounding all the structure around the septum, we need to look for. And this is different story, atrioventricular septal defect partial type, um, small ASD premium is inside like this. And then the Crookes cordis is uh, another problem too, but physiologically small ASD inside. And this is very, very um, ugly shape. Uh, we call that complete atrioventricular septal defect. All the time, the atrioventricular septum has a deficiency, and then the valve insert at same level at the cardiac hooks, but normally tricuspid valve uh, should place towards the apex. So this is different, and on wedging anterior displacement, aortic valve, so aorta is located a little anteriorly, so LV outflow track is longer than normal. And the cleft is, um, cleft is found usually. So complete ABSD, we call the rustil type ABC divided, because um, we need to look at this can be possible for the biventricular repair or not. And then hemodynamic assessment, we it can do with echo. So any flow obstruction is in there, inflow, outflow, or systemic pulmonary venous flow, or the great vessel outflow. 
um, the uh, Dr. Doppler says the color of luminous body is just like the pitch of a sounding body and changes with the motion of a body to and from the observers. So this is echo he uh, defines. And then let's look at this images. And uh, you can see here the aorta. And then this is very, very small pulmonary artery, but we don't know this is native pulmonary artery or not. And a lot of aortopulmonary, um, major aortopulmonary collateral arteries, because this is a pulmonary atresia case. So in echo images, we can notice where, 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 where the flow goes, and then where the flow connects. And then before catheterization or some intervention or surgery, we can uh, clarify about MEPCA um, drains into where to where. And this is pulmonary artery and VSD case. Uh, the segmental diagnosis is inside ventricle, atrial ventricular discordance. So you can notice this here, uh, left atrium, but this ventricle should be right ventricle. So we call it left-sided RV because the valve located a little much more apical vault. So this should be LV, so RA to LV and LA to RV, so disconcurrent ventricle. So the segmental diagnosis is SL and then pulmonary atresia, so X. And this is the case. And then um, if we cannot save the biventricle, we can do the uh, one ventricle or one and a half ventricle physiology. So glanchant and then glanchant physiology, we can look at the SVC drains into pulmonary artery well or not with color Doppler. Like this kind of Doppler um, velocity gives us okay, the flow goes okay. And then one ventricle uh, fountain physiology, we decided to go. And after fountain, pulmonary artery flow is very important because all the pulmonary artery, sometimes discrepancy happens right in pulmonary artery flows. And then LPA junctional stenosis happens very easily. So we need to look for LPA flow is okay and LPA size is okay. And RVOT problem also it's very important for the all kinds of pulmonary atresia or some tetralogy of follow the ORV physiology and other just 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 isolated pulmonary valve problem too. So this is RV outflow pulmonary valve has a doming and this is a doming and flow uh, limit. And then this time pulmonary venous anomaly. This is a supracardiac type TAPVR. We can notice here. The venous flow goes up, goes up, and surrounding the aorta, and then goes into the. So this is a, a ascending vein. We call that in uh, anomalous uh, return. And then this time, infracardiac type. Uh, here we can notice liver, and then heart is here, and then all kinds of venous flow has a velocity. That's a problem because it means. Uh, compression or some stenosis inside there. So this is very, very fatal emergent case. And how about hypoplastic left heart syndrome? We noticed in long axis view, the LV uh, is very small rather than RV. And then LV to aorta, we can notice the valve is very stenotic. And then RV is bigger, but LV is very, very rigorous type. And aorta is very small. And what to do, we need to decide. And all the time, um, severe AS or hypoplastic left heart, these kinds of risk factors in there, uh, it's hard for biventricular repair, as we all know. And Epstein anomaly, this is uh, atrialized RV is the problem. You can look at all the, all the big spaces atrialized. So very, very bad. And then if we look at this left-sided, uh, very small downward right ventricle trivesc tricuspid valve. So this is just a absolute distance index. It's just 13. But this type of very far carpential type is infinite. So a lot different story. So this is, we can just uh, observe or sometimes by ventricular repair or, or just observation, regular follow-up. But this kind of ventricle, we cannot save the RV. And tricuspid atresia is the same um, a problem about RV. This is thickened uh, tricuspid valve, you can notice. And then this time, thickened tricuspid, tricuspid atresia. And then the interesting is gray vessel thing. Uh, here, 
small RV muscular just uh, trachus valve atresia and then RV doesn't work. So very small muscular shape, muscle shape, and then connects our aorta. So aorta arises from that small RV. That's a problem. So we call the trachus atresia with TGA. This is very complex um, ongoing surgery patient. And then this time, AVSD with a valve regurgitation, we can notice the color Doppler and then the uh, continuous wave Doppler. We can uh, estimate the ventricle function is good or not. And then if some kind of disease is pulmonary hypertension, we can notice the severe TR and is estimate about the RV pressure and pulmonary artery pressure, how high. And conventional echo, and then I'm not talking about this time, but we have Tish Doppler echo and then advanced a lot methodology in echocardiography. So if we do the AVSD ventricular function, because AVSD, <laughs> AV valve regurgitation and the ventricular function is very important for what to do for that uh, patient. So we can do like this advanced method. And if cardiomyopathy, a lot problem is inside structure is okay, but IVC is very, very dilated. And then the ventricle is dilated. Atrium is huge dilated. And then mitral regurgitation. The outflow is very limited. All the regurgitant flow is there. Restrictive cardiomyopathy kids. So having merged all my talk, the basic echo tips, we need to look at what to do, what to look at, and then we look and then make a merge for integrate all the image in our brain. So improving basic echo skill, practice, and hard practice, integrate all the images in the segmental concordance we need to make sure in venous system, intracardiac system, valve system, and arterial system, and simple disease or complex disease, what to do for this patient, we need to decide. So the conclusion is our basic good quality image acquisition with only quantitative detection is essential for us. Thank you.